Yeah. <laughs> oh, you already know what we gonna do. Welcome to the studios of Power 96.5. I'm Pam Levy. With me, multi-talented, Grammy-nominated B.O.B. You have an amazing voice. Thank you so I much. I just want to say that. It, sound, it just like butter to my ear. Oh, that is really good to hear. <laughs> B.O.B., Grand Hustle's own. Thank you so much for making time for us and your fans watching. I like to do a little background for those who may not know. So let's try to travel back. Real quick, we'll make it. We'll make it quick. All right. Back to the future. Back. <laughs> you were signed right out of high school, which most people don't know. To Grand Hustle, you're like the LeBron James of hip hop. How? <laughs> how was that? Like, try, take us back there. What was it like? What was going on? How exciting was it back then? You know, coming straight out of high school, it was for me. It was like um, I had to really adjust very quickly, mm -hmm. very fast. And uh, for me, it kind of, it, it kind of, it was like the growth that I needed to to make. That and, and you know, the music evolved with me as I came out of high school because I had experiences from from being in the music industry and you know just traveling at a, at a, a early age, mm -hmm. I guess you know for that type of lifestyle. And, and it kind of just it, it grew with me mm -hmm. and, and and it affected my music. Now, at the same time, you had this hit record in the South, clubs planted everywhere, haters everywhere. Mm -hmm. How were you dealing with not only the success of the record, but the record deal, being in with, you know, the king of the South himself, T.I.? Yeah. Like, what was going on? Paint the picture for us, especially don't, for don't you being me. I'm from... Just oh, taking get, my get getting a little skinny. You get comfortable with Pam Levy. Getting comfortable. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're from Decatur, from Atlanta, and you're, I mean, are you living your dream? Are you thinking, I'm living my dream right now? Definitely. I mean, you know, I, I definitely have to, to uh, attest to being uh, at at the at this caliber, you know, and out um, the gate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, it it, it it all happened so fast. Right. It definitely happened very fast. I do want to touch on that because not only did it happen fast, you had the song "Haters Everywhere," which I love personally, um, and then you. You know, released a couple more songs. I'll be in the sky. One of my favorites, mm -hmm. Generation Lost. I mean, <coughs> featured on Ti's Paper Trail mm -hmm. album. A lot of people like, who is this guy Bob? Featured on the album. <laughs> so you got some notoriety really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and then you fast. Let's fast forward to 2010. Your 2010. First, last year, your first official debut single, Nothing, Nothing on, on you. you, Dude with Bruno Mars, tore up the charts. I mean, it's number one in the UK. It's number one in the US. How did you choose that record as the single? Because you had options. And then, what about how did you bring Bruno into it? Like, let's, tell me about that. Well, you know, I actually worked with Bruno a lot before Nothing on You. Okay. And, uh, you know, when I worked with him, you know, he wasn't like a, a an, an artist on the on the clock. I yeah. would say because you know we're on the clock, meaning like. All right, everybody's behind you. All right, let's go out, get the promo, get exactly. get the package, you can get the art, you know right. everything. Right, still up and coming. Yeah, he, yeah. he was still up and coming. I'm like, right. I'm like, dude, why are you not, why are you not out yet? I mean, right. you know, right. he's playing guitar, singing. I mean, just, you know, I mean, it inspired me. You know, we mm. actually, uh, I remember us being in L. A. at Paramount Studios, um, you know, just kind of passing some guitar legs back and forth and just mm. vibing and, and you know, I would have never thought that. My first single, my first major worldwide single, would have been with, with Bruno, Bruno. Mar Exactly. Yeah. He has a beautiful. And it's voice. and not even just that, but just the the level that the single reached. You know, even being in the industry since I was seventeen, it still shocked me at how fast and how big the the song became. It took over. I mean, it <laughs> took over radio. Still one of my favorite songs. So, how do you think the music has helped you basically find yourself? You know, find Bobby Ray. That, exactly. I feel like I feel like my music has, you know, there, there's a there's a on on stage, you know, public growth that you make, and then there's the behind the scenes growth that you make, and you know they're both simultaneous, mm -hmm. and I think um, that's what that's what fans kind of intuitively pick up from an artist. Mm -hmm. They may not be consciously thinking. Man, he's really developed into a very distinguished right. gentleman. You know, they may not be thinking that, but they may gravitate to you more the more right. that you grow and open up. And, and you know, for me, just traveling through the world and seeing different cultures and, and seeing, you know, going from program to program to, like, you know, all right, go here. Mm -hmm. People walk, drive on this side of the street. Right. All right, 
go over here, people walk on this side of the street. And it's like you understand different things about the world and it really opens your mind up and allows you to, to grow as a person. And, and it allows you to say, okay, the world is definitely bigger than I thought it was. Exactly. That's what, you know, it does for me. It's like this exactly. is the way, you know, I'm a small, small yeah, exactly. person. Um, talk about the topics because you do, I, I love your music because you, you, you can talk about stars, you talk about some galaxies and then you'll be right back in Atlanta. You know, you'll <laughs> give me something like bad eye, you know what I mean? And I'll be like, you know, so talk about where do you get your topics from? Really, you know, when I started as an artist, I, I went through a lot of phases. I went through a lot of phases. Uh, when okay. I started out, it was it was straight. Uh, actually, the first song I ever released was called Cloud Nine. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly singing, actually. And I never wanted to be boxed in. Okay. I just really, that's, I mean, you know, my manager can attest to me from the jump always being like I don't want to be boxed it. in I don't want up. yeah right. and you know for me whenever I felt like well, everybody's expecting me to rap or I don't want to rap I want to play guitar and right. sing everybody's expecting me to play guitar so I don't want to do that I want to rap or I want to produce or I want to I don't want to talk about politics so you, B.O.B. You know? doesn't want to be boxed in therefore you're talking about whatever is inspiring you at that moment yeah you know you know you know people don't wear the same outfit every day <laughs> True. and you know uh I feel like, you know, as a person to be able to just, you know, it, it, it just be, you know, just be natural. Just be, do what you want to do. But as an I'm, artist, I'm though, as an artist yeah. in this industry, though, they do look for the cookie cutter right. sound. If you this type of artist, and then you always need to be coming from this angle. Yeah. If you talking about drugs and then hustling, that's what the angle you need to come from, and yeah. you don't do that. So yeah, you you're right. You know, I feel like people definitely find their lane. You mm -hmm. know, and and you know as you know, business-minded people or artists, you know, think, you know, all right, this is, you know, this is my lane, and, and you know, as they should, you know, but, you know, for example, people go to Krispy Kreme for donuts, they're not going for burgers, they're this not going true. for eggs, and for me, I want people to, to come for me just for good music. Okay. That's what I was, my next question is, ultimately, what do you want your musical influence to be? I mean, what do you, what, what do you want to leave? I just I just want people to know that that you can really choose what you want to be and 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 feel comfortable with that and not have to have feel so much pressure to to live up to the standards of whatever your current uh, cultural situation is I guess you okay. know and okay. and I guess I say that because you know going to different parts of the world and seeing Oh my! They don't even have that construct. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? They like don't they don't even. even yeah. yeah, it's not even a part of their exactly. everyday life. Exactly. They don't and, even. Yeah. And they're and they're fine with it. And I, I feel like you know when, when the doors really open up, you know, people will adjust. But until then, I'm just gonna keep making good music. And you're doing that. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was a good basketball player. There was also another good basketball player. She was three years older than me. And after a while, everyone kind of started basically calling me the next her. Right. <laughs> One day she walked up to me. She was a senior. I was a freshman. She said, you don't really like that, do you? And I politely was like, no, I don't. How are you handling the comparison to Andre 3000? Because it's definitely <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, I actually, I actually probably don't focus on it as much as, as other people do, but mm -hmm. I actually um, got a chance to work with them on my upcoming album project. Nice. Can't wait. And, and I really, I'm really excited so that people can hear that we actually do sound different, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and really, you know, it, it's a good compare comparison and contrast. And, and for me, I feel like it's kind of like a pass the torch moment. Okay. You know, just kind of, you know, being able to just vibe on the track, and, and I'm not gonna happen. say too much about. Okay. That. Well, well, <laughs> I want to talk about the next album. Basically, mm -hmm. what will people hear? Will they be surprised? And when can we expect it? People will definitely be surprised. So definitely be surprised off okay. of the album. Um, what you should expect to hear, uh, definitely a, a progression from the last okay. album. Definitely, um, everything's. I feel like it's more refined. Okay. You know, I feel like I've really keyed in on my on my pocket. Oh, you your know, pocket that Bruno talked about. Even though, even though it's a wide, right. I have a wide range of doing things. Okay. I, I'm in my pocket with each thing that I do, and I feel like I'm, it's a it's a progress, and it's coming March. March 2012. Strange Clouds, March 2012. All right, expect it, March 2012, Strange Clouds. Now, how can people stay connected to you? Give it the rundown. Look, I know March seems like 30 years away, <laughs> but I have an upcoming mixtape coming out called Epic. 
Follow me on Twitter, at B-O-B-A-T-L, to find more information and to stay tuned on the Strange Clouds. Strange Clouds coming in 2012. B.O.B. stopping by the Power 96.5 Studios. As always, I'm Pam Levy, wishing you nothing but success. Thank you. you got it. Thank you again for stopping by Lansing. Say hi to your fans one last time. Yo, it's B.O.B. Shout out to everybody in Lansing. Make sure you stay tuned and look up Strange Clouds. All right, Power 96.5.